Professor Emeritus Dr. Chanita Ruxpolmuang. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chanita, for being with us. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, we are, as you know, we run a little bit um, uh, late. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I would like to introduce you. You are one of our steering committee members. You have uh, co-planned this, this conference with us. Pleasure to have you here. You're the Vice President and Dean of Graduate School of Education, Siam University. So you are uh, an expert of general education sustainability matters at your university. Before that, you have uh, been the Dean of Faculty of Education at Chula Longkorn University. And because of your extensive experience and expertise, you are a member of a number of national uh, committees of the Ministry of Education. I don't have the time now to mention all of them, but your comprehensive <laughs> bio is now a speaker booklet. Chanita, yes. please, the floor is yours. Share from a university perspective uh, what we can do uh, to ensure access and success. And 10 minutes. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Asya, for inviting me for this uh, presentation. I'd like to begin my presentation with the speech of our, could you, can you, uh, okay. So uh, I'd like to begin my presentation with the speech, next slide please. Next slide please. Okay, I'd like to begin my speech uh, with my presentation with the speech from the a uh, proud princess of Siam, or her title at that time in 2005, uh, it was stated that, that I wish all people knew they have rights to deserve good things in their lives, not just getting what they are given. The responsible authorities should recognize such rights as well. For example, this, the, uh, the disadvantaged group and those at the margins of society have rights to have good standard of living. Regarding the right, access to education is the fundamental human right. Education provides opportunity to learn and live sufficiently. Secondly, besides knowledge can be valued resources to help others or community. So this is the, our intent, the intention of our country to provide uh, inclusive quality uh, education for all. So next slide, please. Next slide, please. So uh, we are very uh, fortunate that at present, at the legislation level, we have uh, in, in, on the international level, we uh, we cannot uh, leave out uh, the importance of the World Declaration on Education for All, which was happened in in Jom Tian declaration or Johnson declaration which uh, was signed in in Thailand in 1990 and since then Thailand has uh, ratified many UN uh, convention I just mentioned one that is UN convention on the rights of persons with disabilities of which the government ratified in 2000, 2008 but according to a Thai law the rights of people uh, of, of uh, quality education for all was a uh, guarantee in our constitution of the Kingdom of Thailand since 1997 uh, to 2007 and the present one 2017 and also it was guaranteed in the our National Education Act in of the 1999 and its amendments also, we, the cabinet uh, has approved the uh, legislation on education for unregistered person in 2005, following with the regulation on higher education provision for persons with disability. And the latest one, we just passed the Equitable Education Act about two years ago, uh, 2018. So I think we have a uh, a very good foundation in terms of legal foundation for the equal rights for all in terms of education. So next slide, please. Regarding the uh, underprivileged or uh, marginalized groups, I'd like to give you the picture of, uh, of Thailand. And then after that, I give you what we do in terms of uh, 
the, the education opportunity, and then we are going to emphasize on the university level of COVID response. So giving you the picture of the undergrad, uh, underprivileged group in Thailand, it was found that uh, of the poor students in the primary and secondary age uh, students, we have about uh, uh, 500,000. But according to National Educa uh, Economic and Social Development Board, uh, it was estimated that there are about uh, 670,000 uh, of the children aged 3 to 17 who are out of school. Children who are from very low income family, uh, and uh, we have about uh, this um, large number but, uh, that this family who have a limited opportunity to get to higher education, also get good jobs. When I talk about uh, low income, uh, the poorest family will have uh, average monthly income of between 40 to 300 US dollar. And also, uh, it was found that in 2017, children who are from very low income family or the lowest 20% of the population have only a 5% chance of getting into uh, higher education, which is about six times below the national average. Concerning persons with disability, it was found that uh, only one third are educated and in 2018, it was reported that about uh, the number of, of the person attending uh, have at grade, uh, attending higher education. You see that most of them are studying undergraduate level. As for migrant student, in 2016, it was reported about 61. It was reported, uh, reported that 61 percent are still not in school. And for other minority groups, such as stateless person or the Hill tribes, the, most of the Hill tribes have uh, obtained Thai nationality, but still in 2016, it was estimated that about 100,000 indigenous persons remain without citizenship. So it means that they have a limited opportunity to go to school. So uh, this next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, uh, how do they have uh, access to education? At basic education level, the Office of uh, Basic Education Commission uh, uh, initiate inclusive school within the regular government school. We also have welfare school and special school for uh, disability, for example, school for the blind, for example, like that. And at higher education, we have a special uh, institution that uh, provide opportunity for the disabilities and also uh, provide uh, education for those who want to work with the disabilities. Uh, Lachok Suda College at Mahidon University, which offer both undergraduate and master degree level in for example, master degree in education, special education for the disability offered in this college. And for other higher education or university, we are, the government uh, encouraged university to establish the Disability Support Service Center, what we call is DSS, but not all have this uh, center. Besides that, we have scholarship and special project, not just loyal scholarship, uh, but the Kingdom on the 9 and 10 has provided uh, a lot of uh, scholarship. Uh, you might not know that the present, our present Kingdom on the 10 provide about 70, 70 million baht per year since 2009 uh, for scholarship. And also we have some special projects such as the education provision project for disadvantaged children in the highlands and marginal areas. That uh, some example of how uh, the marginalized group access to education. Next slide, please. As for higher education, uh, we are also have a, a obligation from the government 
according to the regulation of the committee for the promotion of educational provision for person with disabilities and higher education provision for a person with disability uh, that every higher education institution has the duty to accept a proper proportion or number of persons with disability to study in their institution. If they do so, then the committee will uh, provide financial support. But on, on, the other time, on the other hand, the institution has to provide needed facility and uh, services for the disability as well. Moreover, uh, as I said before, uh, the Office of Higher Education Commission or the present would be one of the office in Mahesi or Ministry of Higher Education uh, 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 in at present. Enforce that higher education in the institution will accept people with special needs to study and support uh, them to establish the ESS center. But we still have only about 38 centers out of the number of the educa higher education institution, like Dr. Santawit has mentioned, that Thailand has about 156 uh, institution. So not many much, but, uh, but we, we already have some center then. Uh, more, uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. So concerning with the COVID situation, Thailand is very lucky that we have uh, COVID with very well with the situation and uh, who had just pressed our country for being successful model for COVID containment. It because uh, that's why we, we have the population of 70 million and many condensed uh, populated cities. The total case number of cases less than 4,000 with only 60 days so far. And at present we uh, the latest uh, number about reporting only new, eight new cases, uh, mainly out of the country or arrival from the abroad. So this is a very we are a very good situation about the COVID. Next slide, please. Even then, they have some impact on education because the pandemic started on March. So we, they have some impact on our education. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. At the basic education, the Ministry of, of Education, like all countries, they have to have uh, complied by the government policy of lockdown and school closure uh, during lockdown. Uh, and also we have to postpone our first semester from the regular schedule in May to July. And during that time, we have to plan about the learning mode. So we have to ensure that students will continue to access quality learning effectively and efficiently during the postponement of the school reopening. So by the Ministry of Education apply distant learning television model nationwide. And we are very fortunate that we have the Loyally Initiate project launched a long time ago. So we have a good foundation in for, for the online learning that, for example, we have the DLIT, uh, Distant Learning Information Technology, technology uh, initiated by Ram Ramayana Naith in 1993. And another one is EDLTV, an e-learning system for grade one to 12 students from Princess Mahachakri or the Crown Princess uh, in 20th or six or seven. So we have uh, fortunate that we have a good infrastructure. But uh, in, in dealing with COVID, we have to, uh, not only the infrastructure, we have to prepare the teachers. So a lot of professional training to reskill and upskill teacher especially on, on the online teaching has been uh, initiated by the Ministry of Education. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And at the higher education level, Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation on Mahesi, we have a sub-impact as well. So we have to follow the government 
uh, guideline and policy to close uh, school and uh, it affects our learning time. Uh, how, how can we, uh, we have a, a regulation regarding the, the time required for, a, for a, a graduation. So the each university has to make a good plan for that. And as many other countries, we have to change uh, to the, our delivery mode for to be more flexible and use some hybrid as well to promote online learning, uh, remote and blended learning. And also the ministry uh, considering that there will be some financial effect on the students and the families. So we grant work opportunity to students for every needed students and it, each one will receive about 9,000 per month. That is, uh, that is a very good project. And also we un encourage that in case our student has some problem like some uh, problem that uh, uh, we just heard about the Kazakhstan that some visual impaired student has some important income problem with uh, learning online. So we encourage that the DSS unit will provide some help to them individually. And at individual university, uh, they have some plan with the COVID, uh, uh, COVID uh, plan guideline measure. And most of our university has a financial aid for needed students and start a policy on work from home, lecture from home and using online platform. And at the same time, we think that it is also our duty, the duty of university to help the community. So some university uh, uh, provide US university social responsibility for communities. And you see in the picture that uh, some, my, the president of Seyam University, uh, we, we produce the gel, hand gel and also mask. And I went to some market or work around there to keep knowledge that the people of the importance of social distancing and how to how to look after themselves during this time. So this is what the university has done uh, in in uh, <clears throat> during that peak of COVID time. So next slide, please. Next slide, please. The immediate impact uh, and anticipated impact, that, of course, learning loss from the school closure and uh, some of the free essential school service uh, if, uh, affected for, for uh, free school meal and student welfare are uh, affected during that time. And uh, why the inequality has been widened due to remote and or blended learning approaches, especially with the uh, disadvantage uh, which who are the most vulnerable students because of the lack of the different in terms of socioeconomic status, the rural urban divide and migrant status, uh, they, they have the less opportunity, less support for learning at home and may not may not have access to technology required for remote learning. As, and as for the uh, high students in university, it is a fact that about 20% of the students with average uh, annual income, uh, they have no, no more than uh, 200,000 baht with uh, less than average annual income. So it reflects that the issue of digital divide will be the important and it's also indicate that there are urgent need of skill development to prevent unemployment as well. And uh, other impact would be school dropout because of the financial problem, deduction of government spending on education. And it is difficult to maintain financial aid for scholarship and special support for needed students. Uh, next, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So new normal is expected after the COVID-19, the world we know will not be the same. And I don't know if we, have to, we like to thank COVID or not, uh, but the COVID-19 will be the, the prime disruptor in educational uh, sector. We have been trying to implement online learning for a long time, but not much, not people are interested. But as soon as COVID-19 happened, it is imperative that they have to do some online learning and teaching. So this happened very quick. 
And when the school reopen, we have uh, preventive measures. A mask will be our do our part of our uniform, student uniform. And this, I think this is the time to rethink. And as university has the prime, uh, prime responsibility on learning, so I'm going to concentrate on instruction. So I think that we have, it is a time to rethink how we provide equal opportunity for success and quality education for all. How do we enhance learning and how to learn and lifelong learning, especially some new soft skill and we have to revise or redesign program because there will be interest in new discipline, uh, in chief of interest of students, short course of, for innovation like uh, like uh, online learning platform or some kind of uh, building a COVID, uh, COVID uh, facilities uh, and also training program to upskill or reskill teacher, especially special education teachers and those interested to teach this advantage group. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So I think uh, there will be very high demand for different mode of delivery, demanded on blended learning, both for in-person learnings and distance learning. And this is the time that might be, that the government might enhance the role of Thailand Cyber University Project, which provide the uh, Thai MOOC, Thai massive uh, online, open online uh, courses. So it will be, uh, uh, it enhance the role in providing our, this course. And there's still the issue about digital literacy and digital divide in terms of availability, accessibility, and affordability. And uh, so we have to prepare and support needed uh, for quality, accessible, and affordable infrastructure for all in the university. Uh, the university might have to invest more on online facility and expertise, but they have to think about the digital security system as well. However, I think we have to think about how to balance between IT or digital or between machine and human development. I don't think that uh, if we 100% online will be the solution after COVID because technology is important and useful, but it cannot replace human. And on the last slide, please. Next slide, please. So COVID-19 is granting us an opportunity to improve our education system and assure education for all. So I think we'll, after COVID, let's turn this crisis into opportunity. Thank you very much.